I got a telephone call the other day from the Nishka Tribal Council, from one of their friends in Victoria. Wanted to know why some dealer myself, who covers the province of BC fairly much like a blanket, seems to concentrate entirely on the populated areas. We do the best we can. But fortunately, here this morning, I've got Jimmy Gosnell, whom I first met a long while ago, who is the president of the Nishka Tribal Council from New Ianch, BC. And I have with them Nelson Leeson, the executive coordinator. Even Indian tribal councils have got these fancy bureaucratic names nowadays, Nelson. <laughs> and Jimmy, you want a chance to say your piece about what you regard as an invasion of your land. Oh, definitely. Tell me about it, because what I know about it, you can put in the back of my pinky. Okay, the, first of all, the, uh, I think you know this uh, international giant known as Amex Mining Company? Yes. Yes, well, they uh, just walked into Ar Arley's Arms some six years ago, 74, commenced a study, or supposedly study, which we weren't aware of until about six months ago. And then uh, they announced to us in November last year, to our council in Terrace last year, uh, about the proposed operations, eh? Amex. Amex, yeah. And then uh, we discovered then uh, that they had done a supposedly uh, study of the inlet. This is the head of Observatory Inlet. The Observatory Inlet has two arms in it, Alice Arm and Hastings Arm, by your information. Since you don't know too much about British Columbia, so I may as well tell you exactly where it is. <laughs> You're not quite joking. It's 150 <laughs> miles north of Prince Rupert. It's right, yeah, it's right on about the coast of the Alaska border, eh? not too far from Alaska. Now, what are Amex, now, what are Amex planning to do there? Well, the uh, planning to, uh, first of all, the, the reopened the uh, existing mine there, or small mine. But the, the point, what, what we're concerned about is their proposed dumping eh, into the inlet. They're, they're going to dump the, uh, the tailings, mine, mine tailings, into the inlet. And according to their study, they, they tell us that this inlet will contain the, the tailings. And we say it cannot. This is where the argument is. They're telling us their studies indicate that. We've looked at their studies. We've now hired uh, three scientists to do a, a, an overview of that study. And they tell us that it's a very questionable study. All right, down here on the coast, Nelson and Jimmy, we probably saw something in the paper. The Amex giant multinational corporation is proposing a big mining operation in observatory at the head of observatory inlet. That's correct. And they're going to pour so many hundreds of millions of tons of tailings into what leads to the ocean. Is that mm -hmm. right? That's correct. And we look at it and we say, oh, good. Mining stocks will go up. There'll be a lot of people from who are unemployed down here will get jobs in the mine up there. Right? That's what we say. That's what, that's what everybody else thinks, you know. And that's what you people used to think, too, at one time, was it not? Well, well we, have no, we have no quarrel with the operation, really. What we're quarreling about is about the tailings being dumped in a jack. You, you put it this way. Supposing the same, same mining company proposed to put the dumping in, in Bar Barrett Inlet, right here in Vancouver. What We'd would you do? We'd stop them. We'd yeah, stop Well, that's exactly what we're, what we're doing. You, you don't mind the operation of the mine, but it's the dumping into the inlet. The damage of the environment could be forever. Now, what stage is this at? Have they got pollution control or environmental approval yet? Oh, definitely. They have. They, yes, the federal, both federal and provincial government have given their blessing to this proposed operation. Nelson, were you people uh, consulted at all about this, uh, the environmental or pollution permission? No, we weren't. Uh, as our president mentioned, in November of 79, they, they asked to meet with the Nishka Tribal Council in Terrace, which we did. And we were asking them just what they were prepared to offer us in the line of of employment and what have you. And they, they almost just shunned us away. They said, if you qualify, and none of our people have mined before. And uh, In other words, the union membership down here would be close to your people unless they need permit workers for casual labor up at the mine. They didn't even offer us that. They offered us nothing. How many Except jobs? The access to the sea, they call it. You know. Yeah, they put a road in there and they said they'd give <laughs> us access to the sea. <laughs> Were these Canadian officials of Amex or American officials? Well, the American, I believe. The, well, they're international, really. This is an international giant we're talking about. You know, They're operating all over the world, in Africa, Australia, you name it. You know. Okay, I hate to ask the next question. I remember the Nishkas were the first people, apparently, to win a step in the direction to own the tribal lands. Remember when Berger acted for mm -hmm. you? Yes. Did you win a decision 
uh, involving the ownership of the Nishka tribal lands. As far as we were concerned, yes, we still own the land. Our title has never been extinguished. As a matter of fact, no one has any evidence of our title being extinguished at this moment. You never signed a treaty no at any way. time? No way, no way. Well, have you... I mean, we all had a good little giggle at the Fort Nelson band yes. giving five million to the lawyer on the hundred billion dollar settlement. That's beside the point. Mm -hmm. Have you... Are you close to a settlement are you going to sell the land oh, to the federal not. government definitely if they give you the money? Not. We say the Nishka land is not for sale. But you want no. money from them. What well, do you want the money for? <laughs> we want to be part and parcel of any operation within that land. Would Amex be within that land? Oh, yes, well, definitely. Well, they're within that land. Like, and like we said, Lord, you take tree farm license number one, cancel for a moment. We have no say in cancel. We have no say in Amex. We have no say in nothing, period. It's on your land. It's on our land. Without permission. Without, Without permission, permission, our permission. And Berger supported you. Or Berger got you a decision of some kind. Mm -hmm. Well, four to three split on decision. a technicality. Yeah. It was a split decision. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Gosnell. When was it we met the last time? Oh, this is during the first uh, hearing here in Vancouver. 19... Uh, 1969, I believe it was. It's a Supreme Court of British Columbia. Any, any, yeah. You were still in the radio, radio business. In that we place in the Georgia mm -hmm. Hotel or yeah, something. Yeah. Jimmy Gosnell, President, Nishka Tribal Council. Nelson Leeson, Executive Coordinator. After the break. Just to show Jimmy Gosnell and Nelson Leeson that I'm not entirely stupid, <laughs> during the break I did a sketch of Al Assam. Will you look at the monitor? Where's the, where's the monitor? Let's see it. How long will it take? Oh, I can't see the... I've just done this sketch and we can't show it. Will you line it up and we'll show it as soon as you can. Now, I just want to get a couple of things straight. There it is. See the sketch mm -hmm. I did, Judy? Yeah, yeah, is that all right? Mm -hmm. Close to it. <laughs> Close enough, I think. Close enough. Should be a little uh, further north. Uh, uh, yeah, that's just about it. Uh, well, that's how I sound. Are you telling me, Nelson Leeson, just to confirm what Jimmy Gosnell said, the provincial government and the federal government gave the blessings to this giant operation without even giving a nod in your direction. Exactly. No, no consultation whatsoever. No, no, no consideration. I mean, they, they must still think us Indians are in, a, in the 20s where we didn't care and there was enough land to, to pass out to people. Like, it's the area of the north they have to develop. So they're just marching and doing it. What do you have to do before you have jurisdiction over the use of what you tell me, and I'm not going to call you a liar, is your land? Mm -hmm. What do you have to do well, we're, before we're, you can accept the clout of ownership? Well, we're, we're, we're pushing the settlement, as you know. Well, this settlement is a wide thing. It'll take me days and days, really, to, to, uh, to come to, to answer your question here. But putting it very simply, you would want royalties or franchises or part of the proceeds or some of the control? Well, everything. Everything. You're prepared to allow development, but oh, you want oh, a share oh, of the pie. Oh, definitely, yes. If you look at our declaration, the key word in the declaration is sharing of the resources, not only of the people of British Columbia, but all of Canada, as we said. So in a way, we don't think we're unrealistic in what we're saying. We're not saying we're not kicking anybody out. We're, we're not against any development in any way, shape, or form. But as of this moment, Jack, we have absolutely nothing, no, no say, no nothing in the area. If I, I, you, I've known you long enough to put this to you. Has the, has the, the non-Indian not given you some considerable support over the years to which we're entitled to a wee bit back? I think, I think uh, lately... Putting that nicely. Lately, the non-Indian, uh, through the trade unions in the Northwest uh, Conference, I believe it was, gave us, gave us their support. Eh? That was the first uh, major support that we got towards our aim of settlement of the land. Jimmy, I'm not talking about Niskas, but uh, among the non-Indian in this country, and he's been here a few weeks now, he thinks to himself is when he's had a few beers in the pub, and I'm talking about non-Indians, name of goodness, have we got to give back, buy back the country? Is that a selfish stupid thought well, I don't think man. I don't think the, the the new I was under the impression that you're talking about labor no no these people that you're talking about I don't think an Indian exists in Canada in their minds maybe you're right yeah. I am right maybe you're right what was I going to ask you oh, I was going to take a couple of calls if there was one on the topic from Prince George that's not quite the Nisca country but it's Close getting up that it. way 
Go ahead, please. I'm not even a carrier. I'm a hider. Oh, great. Hider. Yes, mm -hmm. from the Queen Charlotte Islands, from mm -hmm. Massot. Right. But um, didn't Jack didn't Jack just say we're going to buy back the country? No, what I'm saying is that the guy in the pub, the man in the pub, says, why should we buy back the country? Oh, well, if they don't want to buy back the country, then they should leave. And I don't think they're going to buy back the country because they didn't buy it in the first place. <laughs> what are they going to buy back to begin with? You? <laughs> I should never have raised the subject. It's in too delicate an area. That's right. Anyway, you're with the boys on, uh, my guests on this topic. Yes, I know Nelson Lisa. I don't know Jimmy Gosnell, but uh, I know Nelson. Ooh. Oh, Nelson's just a young fella. Yes, he is. <laughs> How old are you, Nelson? I'm 31. 31. How old are you, Jimmy? 39. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't tell me the truth about that, how, what else can I believe, eh? <laughs> anyway, you're younger than I am. Okay, just to sum up your problem, are you planning any instant action, or are you just going to go the long, tortuous route of nagging and negotiation? Well, so far, Jack, we've, our tribe has kept pretty well within the law, as you know, but as you, you, know, you know what the younger generation of people are today, regardless of what color their skin is. They don't give a hoot to what's going on. Sooner or later, they're going to take things in their own hands. This oh, is what they might be worried about. Jimmy, it's going on all that. over the world. That they don't kid yourself. This is my big risk. As far as we're concerned, we will attempt to stay within the law, the bounds of the law. At the moment, we're asking that there be public inquiry into this whole Amex dumping of the, mine, the tailings into the inlet. That's who, what we're asking. Who are you asking, Bennett? We're, we're asking, asking the, we're asking the uh, both provincial government and the federal government that there be a public inquiry, nothing less, is what we're asking for. Now, that's not asking for the moon. In other words, it goes in two steps. One, a public inquiry to ensure that the tailings are properly and safely disposed of. Mm -hmm. And what kind of quantity of tailings are we talking about? 100 million metric tons. <laughs> it's a mile long, a mile wide, and a mile high after 25 years. Now, you figure that out. And they tell us that's going to stay in the inlet. And we say it's going to escape the inlet. Sooner or later, it'll destroy not only this traditional fishing, but commercial fishing in Area 3. Area 3, for your information, is top end of the coast in commercial fishing ways. Mm -hmm. one, one of the one of the, the things is is that it, you know, it, it's a really an environmental issue too. Yeah, I mean, no, I get we're, that. we're worried about. But uh, let me get the second stage, Nelson. One is the public hearing, to make sure the tailings are properly disposed of, and not merely automatic permits given. The second, of course, is allied with your negotiations as to your share of the dibs, right? Mm -hmm. Two things. Next step is what then? To hear from Bennett and. What's the name of the guy? So in far, they have refused us a public hearing. We're still pressing for a public hearing. And he calls. You see, talk about the telephone company and the phones go crazy. <laughs> Mind you, there aren't that many Niskas within easy range. They don't range know. Of... They don't know what's. Uh, oh, yeah. They don't know the problem. What, go ahead, please. Go ahead, please. Yeah, Mr. Whipster. Yes. Yeah, these two gentlemen that they have on the uh, show. Uh, I figure if they don't have this, they should be allowed to have the say in the whole mining progress or the mine should not be allowed to go Fair ahead. Fair enough. He's with you all the way. Mm. Look, I'm grateful you for, to you for coming down. I've done my best to explain your point of view and perhaps I even understand it myself a little better. Mm -hmm. Who's your negotiator now with the federal government on the land claims? Bob Young. Bob? Bob Young. How do you spell it? Young. Y-U-N. Y-O-U-N. Mm, Why are you in? Why are you, is he a... U-N-G. He's a recently appointed man. Lawyer? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Lawyer from where? Edmonton? Uh, Calgary. Calgary. He's based in Calgary. He did some work with, uh, with the Alberta Association. You won't like this question, Jimmy. They don't give me a laugh. Is he on a fee basis or a percentage? I wouldn't know. As far as we're concerned, it's, he was hired by the federal government, so you ask Trudeau that. Oh, they but, hired him on your behalf to act as your negotiator. It's Fair hired him for the federal government. You know, we're negotiating on our own. Good. You live in Terrace or New Ianch? New Ianch. New Ianch. How's the housing in New Ianch? You've always been a pretty sophisticated ban, but are you happy with the housing you have no, in New Ions? No, by all means not. As a matter of fact, I think our band council is going to ask the Department of Health to do a survey, the, the National Health, of course, to do a survey to see how many houses in New Ions meets the Canadian standard. That's what we're going to do. How many do you think meet the Canadian standards? <laughs> Probably about 10 percent. You've got running water. Silly question, but I must ask it. Yes. Electricity? Yes. But very low standard housing? Right. 
Sewage, yeah, we have sewage and all that. But they, you know, uh, when you talk about standards in housing, you got to really know what you're talking about. So we're going to ask the National Health and Welfare people to do the survey. And I'm, then we'll know where we're at. I'm very grateful to G James Gosnell, President of the Nishka Tribal Council, and Nelson Leeson, the Executive Coordinator. Thanks, gentlemen. Thank next, you, <laughs> Next, next, next. Just a minute. Next, next, next. Next, Jess Sakamore of Kemar. After the break.